Imagine starting your own business and making $4.3 million in your first year. Now, what if I told you before you can have access to those millions, you would have to heal from your trauma? My biggest check in, in my house in five in 600 square foot apartment was $155,000 for the week. Ooh. At that moment, that, I'm gonna be honest with you, some people look at trauma as just something bad happening. That was traumatic. Mm -hmm. When I say traumatic, it was like, oh my God, I'm scared. I it thought was you more like, yeah, yeah. yeah, it was more like, Whoa. let's go. You gotta run. You get what I'm saying? Let's yeah. go. Either you gonna lose it or you gonna gain more, mm -hmm. right? That was my mentality right then. You know, one of my favorite quotes is your trauma is not your fault, but healing, now healing is your responsibility. According to psychiatry.org, PTSD affects approximately 3.5% of US adults every year. Today's guest embodies that very quote from being robbed at gunpoint to overcoming depression and anxiety. July after that, I wasn't just robbed at gunpoint, I was robbed of my confidence. Mm. I was robbed of um, being a fearless woman. Yeah. I was robbed of my joy. I was robbed of my happiness. I allowed myself to be robbed of those things for a very long time. And six months in, I'm 50 pounds overweight. So the irony is, I am now in trauma. Self-made millionaire? Well, correction. God made millionaire, as she would say, is helping hundreds of women through her passion for beauty, wellness, and health. Before we hop into today's show, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Now let's jump into today's video. So Natalie, you are a self-made millionaire at, at 35. I, I gotta ask this question. You're 35 today at the time of us recording this. When did you make your first million? So I'm a God-made millionaire. I'm a God-made God okay. millionaire. Correct me. Listen, <laughs> I see this a lot and I'm yeah. a God-made millionaire. And, and once we get into my story, you'll see why. Yeah. My first million dollars was made at the age in 2020 at 33. 2020. Yes. At and you 30, was 33 years 33 old. 33 years old. Okay, cool. I got to ask you this question because I think a lot of people ask, well, how did you do it? And and, and I think we'll go there, right? But I think I want to know when you made your first million as a black woman. Right. How did you feel internally? Like, what was the thought? Like, like wow, a man didn't give me a million dollars. Right. You know what I'm saying? My husband, boyfriend didn't give me a million dollars. I worked. I used the gifts and the talents that's on the inside of me to make a million dollars. How did you feel? feel when you realize like wow I just made a million dollars I felt blessed but then I also felt it was like this trigger that hit it, it said too much is given much is required mm -hmm, right mm -hmm. and my first year I made a million dollars God didn't just give me one he didn't just give me two he didn't just give me three he gave me 4.3 my first 4. year. 4.3 million my first dollars. year so that's how I knew something supernatural was happening and I was the example because I worked so hard all my life to just figure it out, right? Opened up businesses, closed businesses, bottle service, sold hair, did hair, graduated from Harvard University, went to the Beta Institute and studied skin, uh -huh. and God just didn't, he didn't give up on me. Right. So in the middle of a pandemic where everybody should have just been had crises, there was, it didn't make sense to the outside world how I was able to earn $4.3 million, yeah. but I just locked in. Wow. And I was locking in, but it was all seed time and harvest. Wow. So all the work I did for 33 years, it was like, all right, Natalie, what you gonna do now? Wow. Lock in, are you gonna play around and sneak outside in the pandemic and go here and do this, be booed up? No, yeah. I locked in. So I was in my 600 square foot apartment right there in Southwest and I okay. locked in. I worked out. I, my mindset, I was watching, you know, uh, church every day. I was in my word. I was on the phone with conscious conversation. Anyone that spoke death, spoke anything outside of life, I did not talk to on the phone in the pandemic. For real. I locked in. It was like boot camp for me. Wow. And so, okay, let, let, let's, let, let's stay right there because now we see that you locked in. You went to an HBCU. You yes. know what I'm saying? That's black love. All you, four, know. you know? You <laughs> know? Uh, my uh, my goddaughter um, Simone, what up, baby girl? Hey, Simone. Uh, graduated from um, Howard University, um, so I have I have much love for Howard. Um, Four point three million dollars first year. Let, 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 let's talk about the practical. How? How did you make four point three million? In, what were you doing to make four point three million dollars at thirty three years old during the, during the height of COVID? So one of the industries that people hate uh -huh. and it has a stigma to is network marketing. Oh, talk right? to me, you know. So, talk to me, and okay. The, and that's a that's a um, trauma 
that I believe our community has to get through. Because if you don't have the skill sets and the resources, you need to find something uh -huh. that's going to pay you in real time. Okay. So after graduating from Howard University, I opened up my salon when I was 22 years old. Okay. Right there by Brooklyn Station Catholic University. Right around the corner. Literally. Okay. I opened it 22 years old. No investor, no bank loans. Yeah. Literally, I was doing bottle service at everybody's favorite clubs, stadium, park, all the favorite clubs. Yeah. And I was flipping my bottle service money, okay. buying hair, selling hair, saving the money. And I took $20,000 and I opened up my first business, brick and mortar. Okay. And at that moment, I realized that being an entrepreneur does not mean you're a boss. Come on now. I was working day in, and day, day, and day in and day out, yeah. going to the bottle service at nighttime, sleepless nights, mm. traveling across the world to do bottle service. Mm -hmm. I said, Natalie, the same grind that you have for bottle service, you need to find something and put that grind in over there. Mm -hmm. So I got mm -hmm. into network marketing with okay. Total Life Changes. Okay. I found a woman, Stormy Wellington. I Stormy. Saw, yeah. Coach Stormy. Big Storm, right? Storm, I need to get you on the show. Let's man. get her. Let's I get her. I had three people on my show talking about Stormy. That's my big sister. And uh, one thing I love about this is that seed time of harvest. Mm -hmm. Before I got in network marketing, I don't have the same story. Broke mm -hmm. and busted. It, that wasn't my thing. Okay. I was a girl that was like, you know, Doing your respected, thing. Yeah. right? Yeah. Six figures, all that good stuff. But I had to find a product. Okay. That worked yeah. and that paid. See, people join products and companies because of the hype and yeah, the excitement. But it don't work. Rah, rah, rah. Like, you know, oh. that wasn't my thing. And I'm be honest with you. Oh. I knew nothing about Stormy. Mm. So that was another thing. Mm -hmm. People said stuff, but I went to Howard. You already know how we are, Howard. Yep, yep. I'm like, okay, that's dope what she's doing, but does it work? Right, right. right. So when I met her, I said, okay, well, this needs to make me $5,000 a month. Mm. That's what I need. For me to leave bottle service, I need 5000 extra a month so I can be able to move my, my brand yeah. plush at the time to the okay. next level. Okay. So throughout this time, what was the most in interesting thing was I realized people buy into the person, not the product. That's true. With everything, yeah. right? Yeah. And I think a lot of times people are focusing so much on this big thing and this service and this product, and they're not realizing that they're the brand. Mm. So how you show up, who you are, your character, your integrity, like your compassion, right? Mm -hmm. Who are you behind closed doors, not social media? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the word traveled through the city. Mm -hmm. Natalie mm -hmm. is doing network marketing. Mm -hmm. And when I tell you the gates open, the gates opens, because people said, wow, okay, you're doing this, then social media, I got, I got a little juice on social media, 5,000 followers. My DMs were crazy. So I had literally like over 1,000 people that signed up my first year in network marketing. Wow. My first 90 days, my first 30 days, I made $12,000 part-time. My first 90 days, I made $35,000. So then something clicked to me, I said, all right, Yes, yeah, Stormy's a millionaire. I wasn't thinking millions. I'm thinking freedom. I'm a right. young girl at That's the time. That's so good. So good. I wasn't thinking millions. I was thinking freedom. I think That's a lot of so times good. this millionaire thing is, and I want, I want that for everybody. Yeah. But the truth really is, what is your freedom amount? Mm. What is that freedom number that's gonna make you feel good? Mm. What's that? What's that? What's that dollar amount that's going to fuel your why? What mm. hurts you? What pains you? If you don't keep going. What is going to be felt if you don't keep waking up in the morning? That's is cool. it your children? Is it your parents? And mind you, I don't have any children yet. Yeah, yeah. I love my parents, but uh -huh. I thought about legacy. I thought about life. I thought about just reversing the narrative. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. Because I was supposed to be a statistic. It is very important to have a freedom number. Your freedom number is in direct proportion of what you need to survive and thrive as an individual, whether you're a man or a woman. So let's give me, let me give you an example. Let's say that every single month you have more month than money. You need an extra dollar amount to come in cash flow so you can be able to live a peaceful life so you won't be stressed out about money. It's very difficult to really show up every day stressed out about money. My freedom number has changed. My bills have changed. I don't want to just make enough money to pay my bills. My mother's on my payroll. My dad's on my payroll. I have a full staff. I have three businesses. So my freedom number is always changing. In addition, my goal in this season is to generate 
more income so I can create more wealth. So I can create a legacy for whenever I have a family, right? But I'm just excited right now to be able to understand freedom and understand that money is a byproduct of freedom, but money is not everything. Okay. They look at me on social media, like, who's your baby daddy, right? right, 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 right. That, and that's just the truth. Right. And, it's, and shout out to all the moms and the dads, but that's not my story. I right. want Simone to look at me and say, I can do it because of Natalie. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I, network marketing changed my life because I found a service, I found a compensation plan, and a culture that was real. Mm. Then Natalie was evolving. Mm. So Natalie that people know at 21 and 22, I love coming home, but sometimes when you come to your city, you don't know me like that. Right, that's, right? True. that's true. If you knew me even two years ago, you don't really know me like that because I've evolved so much. Right. The things I care about, it's different now, yeah, right? Yeah. So I believe that when you're really about to enter a, a financial um, increase mm -hmm. where God is about to open up your territory, you have to be authentic and real with your truth. Mm. You can't chase the money. So the the money and the millions are waiting for me. Time just didn't caught up. It didn't it didn't catch up yet. God already won. He already had abundance on my life, but He needed me to be obedient. And I just, I was fighting the good fight. I was listen. I was fighting the good fight. Yeah, yeah. I was sneaking doing bottle service. Okay. I stopped doing bottle service. Sneaking doing that. Hanging out with this person here and there. And He was like Natalie. Didn't I show you time and time again mm. that I got you? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, Ooh. Yes. So, yo, yo, so, all right, so year one, so you're saying all four million of that came from network marketing. So I got network marketing in okay. 2016. 16, all right. Doing hair still in 2016. Still doing hair. Yes. Okay. So check the story. I was really interesting. I didn't think millions. I thought freedom. Right. I wanted to get out of doing hair. Okay. I no longer want to do hair anymore. Okay. I said, when I make my first six figures from network marketing, I'm retiring from doing hair. Okay. Ten months, I retired from doing hair. Shababa. Okay. I, exactly. Yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So, ten months, I retired from doing hair. Because I feel like when you're touching people, yeah. it's a, that's an anointing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want the hairstyles that would call for that to do hair. Yeah, yeah. Not for me that wanted to get money. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. I got you. So, then my nonprofit, Woman Who Boss, launched. Okay. And another blessing. And this is how I knew that something God was trying to get my attention. A half a million dollars in government grants contracts. Wow. My first year launching my nonprofit. Okay. So the government saw fit that my story and my brand, Natalie Nicole, mm -hmm. was powering Women Who Boss. Mm -hmm. And they wanted me to go into the school systems, mm -hmm. teach entrepreneurship, mm -hmm. go into um, the the juvenile detention centers. It's powerful. It, Powerful. I'm talking about when I tell you if I needed to course correct and fix myself mm -hmm. was me looking at those little girls mm. in, in the detention center. And that was a healing because remember I was I was working the bottle service. Ah. So I didn't go back to bottle service. Wow. My next outside of doing network marketing part time still, mm -hmm. I'm still doing it part time. Okay. I have Woman Who Boss Network. Yeah. I'm doing youth conferences with uh, uh, Trayon. Okay. The mayor, yeah. you know, I'm getting awarded all these things, and it's, it's from my philanthropy, it's from my work. Yeah. So that's how I knew I was in it. Yeah. I, I was like, I like this. Yeah. I like service. Wow. So fast forward, 2019, things are changing the government. You know, like policies and procedures change. Mm -hmm. but I still enjoy working with the kids, mm -hmm. but I had to pivot a little bit. Right. Right? So right. I have a retail store. I close down my salon. I have a retail store inside of, right up the street in Upper Marble. I saw. And it's called, it was Plush RX. Okay. And we just literally was selling Total Life Changes products. And my, I have my own skincare line. Okay. And then beauty. We were having that in there. Waist trainers, all that good stuff. Then network marketing went from part-time to full-time in 2019. Really? Okay. Literally four years of network marketing, yeah. I did about two hundred ninety thousand dollars. Okay. Right. Okay. Two thousand nineteen, Stormy and I got in a deeper alignment. We got on the road. Okay. We started going to different cities. Yeah. March, February, March of two thousand twenty. Uh huh. We get that call. It's COVID. It's the it's the the you know Corona, all that stuff. I go full time two thousand nineteen. Six months later. Right? Mm. That's 2020. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. A little bit, a few months later, mm -hmm. I make a million dollars. My first million dollars. That's still 2020. We're still like in in April, May right now, right? Talk to I, you. I was talking about this was like unbelievable. Right. It's like me looking at my check for a week and I don't make any income claims with network marketing. Right. But this is me doing the work. 
Wow. My biggest check in, in my house in five, in six hundred square foot apartment was one hundred and fifty five thousand dollars for the week. Ooh. At that moment, they, I'm be honest with you. Some people look at trauma as just something bad happening. That was traumatic. Mm. That was traumatic. Whoa, 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 <laughs> <laughs> whoa. <laughs> My producer's even laughing like, I, I, whoa. <laughs> did, 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 did Nally just say making $150,000 in one week was traumatic? Uh, don't, don't, don't say that. <laughs> Y'all, I want you to drop a comment. Just drop it in the comments. If you made $150,000 in one week, are you traumatized? Are, are you, what, huh? I remember the first time I made $150,000. Actually, I made, I, yeah, I think it was in, in, a, in a day. That's big. Yeah, man. And just the other, just the other day, actually, I, I showed my uh, my producer, I got an email saying, like, hey, man, just one day, hey, hey you got $150,000. I was like, oh, okay, cool. And it's wow. like, we've, we've been seeing that a lot now. I don't know if you know, um, uh, I just went blank. David Amantia. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good friend of mine. And um, he was like, all right, man, you, you're making all this money. He said, this is... It's, it's, it's now it's time for million dollar months. Yeah. And I was like, now that will bring some trauma to my life. So let me say this. And congrats. First of all, congratulations. Oh, no, man, we, we win it. That's go. a big deal, right? But why was making one hundred fifty thousand dollars so, traumatized? So though? check this out. You're making money already. Yeah. And you're pivoting. Yeah. At one hundred thousand dollars a day and one hundred fifty thousand dollars a day. Uh -huh. People don't even make that in a year. Right. 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 right so right. You, you have a black girl that. My mom and dad worked hard in, you know, single family household. I, I don't own, I, I've never seen anyone own real estate outside of my grandma, right? Wow, okay. You're, let, let's, let's go back a little bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. In college. Yeah. Trying to figure it all out. Right. I'm living coldest winter, love, coldest winter ever in real life. Yeah. I'm dating d guys in the streets. I'm figuring it out. Okay. You know, the, you know, I'm the it girl, at, you know, at in D.C. Yeah, yeah. I had to fight to continue to stay a, a, a a woman of worth and value, mm. right? Without compromising. Mm. There's many times where I could have got married and all that stuff, but I've always knew that God had a different level of anointing in my life and I need to be patient. Okay. So here I am being patient. I was making six figures. Yeah. Going from six, six figures. Six figures for the year you was Yeah, making, making a quarter million dollars, a half year. a million dollars. Yeah. Okay. It's still having bills. Yeah. So you go from, this is, their financial trauma is a thing, right? God. So you. if you weren't taught or understand the value of money, that's real. Your credit's bad. That's I made real. four million dollars of a credit score of, uh, of a six hundred five ninety. <gasps> what the? What? So you get what I'm saying? You made four million with a credit score of five ninety. Yeah, this is trauma. Come on, yeah, let's, let's now, talk now about I'm, it. Let's I'm understanding. Let's I'm have a real understanding. conversation. We see the bags, we see the shoes on yeah, Instagram. Yeah, yeah. That's things that we were taught, right? So now you gotta bring it back a little bit. You gotta say, okay, black woman. Yes, Harry Tubman did her thing, she's still amazing. Rosa Parks, Michelle Obama, Oprah Winfrey. But Natalie Nicole Smith, you were created to be a disruptor. And you have to teach the people the truth. Mm. So when you make money, that money is not yours. Are you tithing? Mm. Are you reinvesting? Mm. Are you saving? Mm. Are you putting money away for your taxes? Mm. Are you handling the little things? Is, are your bills on auto pay? Come on now. Ma'am, are your bills on auto pay? Talk to me. So I had to recondition how I treated money. So how did you do that, though? How I, did that's you exactly what I did. I got out of, when I say traumatic, it wasn't like, oh, my God, I'm scared. I it thought was you more that. like, yeah, yeah. yeah, it was more like, Whoa. Let's go. You got to run. You get what I'm saying? Let's yeah. go. Either you're going to lose it or you're going to gain more. Mm -hmm. Right? That was my mentality right then. So I start digging into personal development. I start getting, you know, asking the right questions. I start investing. I start saving differently. I became a Chase private client. People argue about that. But listen, build a relationship with a bank. One bank. Then you build a relationship with another bank. So yeah. Navy Federal, Chase private client. Yeah. Those are my peoples. Yeah. Right? Because uh, yeah. when you want to make a move, you go to the people that you have a relationship with. I got you. So I'm learning these different things. Then the second part, you can be a public success and a private failure. Absolutely. I handle my debt. Mm. I handle my debt. Mm. Now she's talking about my right? language. I handle my debt. Ah, dog. Right? Man, let's go. I move differently. Yeah. I don't just put my money in everything. Any bright idea that you tell me, people, whoever's watching, they will tell, they will tell you firsthand, firsthand, Natalie, I have a great idea. I'm out in that season right now. I'm on that flow.
Mm. Right? Because I can't be everywhere. Mm. I'm one person. Mm. And I want to make sure that my cup runneth over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't just be all over the place. Yeah, yeah. So that was another way I was dealing with that financial reset in my life. I got because you. I realized that fear and faith can't operate in the same space. Yeah, yeah. Either you have faith or you have fear. Yeah, yeah. And if I believe that abundance has my name on it, yeah. I will never be broke another day in my life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My family will be financially free, and it's yeah, up to me to change the whole dynamics yeah. of how we treat money. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. that's what I did to do the work. So on social media, guess what? Right. I started speaking truth. Ooh. I started telling the truth. And I got caught up a little bit, and we'll, we'll get, I don't know if you know about the whole robbery situation. I do, it's on my notes. Right, so it was hard, Anthony. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like. Because you have to, when you are making money, people want money from you. Yep. Uh, everyone has a great idea. They want to go places. Mm -hmm. So guess what I started doing? What? Buying people stuff. Like, yeah, I'll pay for you or I'll pay for this. So there's trauma right there. Mm. You're not supposed to pay for everything. You get what I'm saying? So no is no. Right. And I wasn't saying no. Yeah. So it took me like about two to three years to go through that whole like being financially responsible. Wow. It did. So you made 4.5 with a 590 credit score, and you was sounds like you was buying some of your friends, family, some things. And it's so funny. Um, um, I tell my team this all the time. I was like, hey, man, I want you to make six figures with me. But right. I'm, not, I'm not giving you six figures. Right. You know what I'm saying? You're you going to work. Got to so work. I, I, pay my, I pay my team. They get a base salary. And I tell them this. I was like, hey, now you can get 30% of that. You can get 5% of this. But you yeah. got to put in the work. I ain't going to just give it to you. Yeah. You know, and, and I feel as if sometimes a lot of people, when they look at people like yourself, myself, or successful people, they automatically assume, you well, you got it. Just yeah. give it. But me giving it to you is not good stewardship no. of Talk the about resources it. God has given me. Talk about it. It's like I had to work. Yeah. I had to bust my butt. You need to work and bust your butt as well. Because faith and works, worse than faith, works hand in hand. Hand in hand. So it's like for me, I, I, I feel that. And I remember the first... The first time I really, really started making money and I started just, you know, just just giving money to my family and buying them large things and doing this. And then God convicted me and said, man, you're single, no kids, no wife. If you sit here and you give all these ladies this stuff, sit here and give all your family and friends this stuff. And then when you find your right. best thing, you're going to go to her. You're going to say, well, I'm sorry. I gave it all away to her, to the girl who ended up being just a friend. I gave it to my mama, who <laughs> my mama. I gave it to my daddy, my brothers, my sisters, my my boys, my people. But I wasn't stewarding it well to actually save. So now, Torrey Roberts taught me this a, a while ago. He said, man, the my favorite word to say now is no. A and no is, is, is cheap. Yes, it's very expensive. <laughs> And so it's like, now I'm like, okay, wait. Um, they asked me, like you, it's like, hey, I, I got this idea. I want to run this. Nah. Because I, I need to see the value in it before I say yes first. So I, I was going to say something funny. I used to hate the word no. For real. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Because it's like, no is not right now. I have a friend, and I realized this person always says no first. Mm. I'm like, why do you always say no? Mm. Listen, it's easier to say no than yes. It I is. come back and say yes later, or I'll come back and think about it. And I realized... After going to therapy, from my healing process yeah. of getting robbed, see everything happens for a reason. Yeah. And that, like thinking about it now, because when you get when you're in it, you're in it too deep. Yeah, yeah. When you're out of it, you reflect and say, "Oh, this wasn't even for me. Yeah. That was for us yeah, yeah, yeah. to learn." Yeah. I was the, the living sacrifice. I yeah. still live, but I'm the testimony that people are going to learn from. And I realized that at that moment in my life, I was a people pleaser, mm. always saying yes, never saying no. Now, yeah. when, when you say you was robbed, I want to go there. Yeah, let's talk that, about I, it. I was reading that in your story, and I was like, and you said, man, I, like, talk about that. Where were you robbed? Why were you robbed? And do you think it was someone who you knew or knew of? So there's dynamics to this story that's interesting. A lot, very interesting. See, when you do things because of your flesh, mm -hmm. and God did not say, hey, this is your steps. This is what it is. So people always say, Natalie, why are you talking about God? Let me tell you something. The moment I do not keep him in the forefront of my life is mm -hmm. the moment that I can't even think clear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't even, I, that's what it is, right? Right. And I realized that I can't rely on my own thoughts mm -hmm. to make the right moves. Right, right, right. So in that process, that, that, that day, and if I can take full responsibility today, mm. full responsibility, I had no business being where I was at. 
I had was in my Lamborghini. Okay. Red flag. Mm. Why in the red? Why are you in the Lamborghini, in the middle of Houston, looking at a, a venue by yourself? By yourself. By yourself. By yourself. Mm. And Lamborghini truck or car? Truck. The Urus. Mm, by yourself. I like it. Okay. In a narrow street. Mm. I've been surviving DC for this long. Yeah. What in my right mind thought that was okay? okay. Right, right. I didn't right. think. Mm. Secondly, got a Chanel bag. Okay. You got uh, AP on. Uh, what made you think that was okay? Let's talk about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We gotta think before we move. Right. That's another thing. Like I'm just starting to like be more minimalist recently because it's like I don't like I might have little pieces here and there, yeah. but I don't need it. To, to validate myself as a woman. Right, right. Right? Right. So that, that on that day, number one, I have a Range Rover now, I shouldn't have been in that car, number one. Mm. And number two, I shouldn't have been alone. Mm. And number three, I went to the same place. I was looking for a venue for an event. Okay. Where my, my, my team was coming in town. I wanted to get an event for them. Okay. I went to that same place two times in a row the day before. Yeah. And the second day I went around the same time with my same car. Wow. That don't make sense, Natalie. Wow. 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 Oh, the Eurus is back. The girl is back. Yeah. Right? And at that time, social media is a thing. Yeah. So... I don't, like, now, I didn't really dig too deep. I have some ideas, but the reality is, let me take full responsibility. Mm -hmm. At that moment, I had to choose to live. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And the event planner, the person, like, when, when the guys pulled up, mm -hmm. it was the guy that owns the venue. He was, like, a Caucasian, wherever he's from. Okay. The event planner is me. Why didn't he get robbed? Oh, he was, he was with you as well? Yeah, it was three people. It was the Caucasian guy yeah. or whatever country he's from. Yeah. The the event planner was yeah. is a black guy. And me. And you're the only one that got robbed? I got robbed. It, it happened so fast. But I would literally, the, the guys came, the guys are coming down the street. Right. And it was like a movie, Anthony. Wow. The guys are coming down the street. It was like rolling down the street. <laughs> right. I'm telling you. It was wow. coming down the street. The door was a little ajar. Okay. It happened so fast. And I was in my trunk sampling TLC products to the owner. Mm. Doing what I do. Because yeah. I'm a worker. Yeah, you're right? yeah, So you. I'm like, let me sample, let me use some products before I leave. Right. He jumped out. The driver had the gun pointed. And the other guy had the gun pointed at the same time. So as soon as he came... I'm like, what? Like, in my mind, I'm like, what is happening? But you think, like, it's like your heart just drops. Right. You're, like, dead, but you're walking for right. real. Because right. you're like, what's happening? Right. Your body goes in shock. So I go to, there's nowhere for me to go. Right. So I go to the side of my car. <laughs> like, the, the guy that the, the event planner runs inside, he locks, he, like, locks the door. Locks the door. Yes. He, like, it's nothing for me to do. It was not, like, come here. It was the nothing. And it was such close proximity. So I go to the side of my car, and I just pray. And I'm like, Lord, please. Like, this this ain't it. Please save my life right now. That's the only thing I can think about. Wow. I blacked out. Like, as far as I'm praying. Well, he's robbing me and I'm praying. Because right. the gun's to my head. Mm -hmm. He's, like, trying to take whatever off. He didn't even get everything. Mm -hmm. He was a, a newbie, for real. Mm -hmm. Like, and that's what God saved. Because mm -hmm. a newbie could have shot me. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. It was nothing but the grace of God that I'm here right now. Wow. He didn't get, like, I had other stuff on. He didn't get it. Right, 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 right. right. He took my watch. You he took my problem. bag. No, he didn't. He even take Anthony, let, I want you to understand Gosh, this. That was God. These guys could have put me in the trunk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They could have took my car. Yeah, yeah. This could have been bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But God said no. Yeah. He's, I'm going to slow you down, mm -hmm. but I'm not going to take you out the game. Okay. So at that moment, I just was like, I was, I, my mom and dad, everybody, I'm like by myself. Right. You know, at the time, like, you know, um, you know, the guy I was dating at the time with, he was out of town, uh -huh. and his best friend did come. He helped me. Like, I'm so grateful for my bro. Mm -hmm. You know, he came, and then, you know, I called him, but he felt helpless. It was crazy. I'm FaceTiming him. He's like, he can't do anything. Mm -hmm. It was so, I mean, I'm like, I felt helpless. Mm -hmm. In D.C., I know a lot of people, mm -hmm. you know? So fast forward, my life changed a lot after that. I wasn't just robbed at gunpoint. I was robbed of my confidence. Mm -hmm. I was robbed of... Um, being a fearless woman, yeah. I was robbed of my joy. Mm. I was robbed of my happiness. I allowed myself to be robbed of those things for a very long time. Wow. And six months in, I'm 50 pounds overweight. So the irony is, I am now in trauma. It was so important for me to heal after my robbery because I believe that I was living in fear. I deserve to be happy. I deserve to have joy. 
And I could not get to that point until I felt better about myself. So healing, getting therapy, getting closer to God allowed me to understand what I deserve and to live in it so I can actually attract that. I am a full trauma at this moment. Right. And I'm a walking traumatic mom at this point because mm -hmm. I'm doing everything for social media. I'm showing up as a leader. That weekend we found another venue and I still was there, wow. <laughs> right? Wow. I was committed and I was consistent. Right. And I'm still, I was still knocking down the door brick by brick. Mm -hmm. But the truth was I was not okay. Internally. I was not okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm in a new relationship at the time. Mm -hmm. And I don't even think he fully understands this even to this day. Mm -hmm. I was not okay. Hey, real quick. When you're feeling your best, did you know you can actually take on the world and accomplish anything you want and anything you set your mind to? But sometimes life can get in the way and you may start to feel overwhelmed or like you're not showing up as the best version of yourself. That's where therapy can come in. By working with a licensed therapist, you can get closer to being the best version of yourself and feel more empowered to handle whatever life throws your way. If you're considering giving therapy a try, which I highly suggest, BetterHelp is a fantastic option. You see, it's convenient, it's flexible, it's affordable, it's gonna fit inside of your budget, and it's all done online, fam. Simply fill out a brief questionnaire to be matched with a licensed therapist. And here's the thing, you can switch your therapist at any time for no additional charge. If you want to live a more empowered and fulfilling life, therapy can help get you there. And right now, because you are my family, you can get 10% off your first month when you visit anthonyoneal.com forward slash therapy. Again, that's anthonyoneal.com forward slash therapy. You can get the link in today's show notes. But hey, take the first step towards a better you. Now, here's the second step. Let's get back to the show, because I know it's a good one. There's no way you can love anyone properly and if you don't love yourself. Mm -hmm. It wasn't possible. Mm -hmm. Friends, I, you don't know me anymore. I don't even know myself. Mm -hmm. So I'm in this space where I, I did not get therapy. Mm -hmm. I'm in this space where I'm figuring it out. I'm trying to figure it out. You're this new millionaire. And the, during this space, I'm telling you something so, so amazing. Most people would have like been flat out broke. God gave me a couple more millions because mm -hmm. I, I, I stopped working. Mm -hmm. So I was network marketing keeps on going. You know, you do the work, you, you show up, but it was bare minimum what yeah. I was offering. Yeah. I had nothing in me. Yeah. I'll show up here and there, and my business kept running. Wow. So that's why I'm faithful to network marketing. Wow. Yes, I have other businesses, but network marketing never stopped paying me. Yeah. So my mind, everything that people talk about network marketing, it's a scam, it's this. The people stop, network marketing kept on paying me. Do you feel that there are some companies out there in the network marketing space that are scams though? So when you are looking for a network marketing company, mm -hmm. you're looking for a product and service mm -hmm. that works. Yeah. You're looking for leadership, a culture, corporate staff. Yeah. Not just the person, not just Natalie Nicole Smith. Okay. Who owns this company? Yeah. What's their character? What's their core values? Right. Right. Because right? Right. you can create a culture amongst your team. Right. Right. And then compensation plan. Right. People keep selling dreams in these big meetings of, yes, it's the next best thing, and we're gonna do this. Right. Show me your check. Mm. Show me what you did. Because mm. a lot of leaders take deals yeah. to come to companies. Yeah. Without a deal, show me what you're doing. Yeah. Matter of fact, don't just show me what you're doing. Show me 10 people you've helped in the last 30 days. Yeah. And what, did they make at least $1,000? Yeah. I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not looking at the millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. So in that season of my life, literally like that six months, gaining weight, I had to reset Natalie. So I had to reset my people, like people, it was felt because I was a leader that was like very energetic, right? Mm -hmm. And as I'm leading, I had to lead, I had to get back with God mm -hmm. and start re-leading myself. Mm -hmm. And that took self-love so I can lead my people properly. Mm -hmm. Cause God gave me a team of 81,000 people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm leading them virtually, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So, but I was not okay. Mm -hmm. So that's another thing with network marketing is like, the head matters too as a leader. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times leaders get caught up in the world mm -hmm. and you gotta go back to the core when you didn't have anything. Mm -hmm. When I didn't have anything, what did I need to be able to win in this company? Yeah. So although I have other businesses, I have my store in Houston Gallery, my store is still there. I have Woman Who Boss Network. Mm -hmm. I have my branding agency. Yeah. Natalie, these people don't have that. Mm. Double, double down yeah. and go back to the basics. Yeah. So as I rebuilt Natalie, 
I re- I'm rebuilding my team right now. That's good. Because they need they need freedom. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I realized that my assignment was way bigger than just me and these things, these these projects I have. There are innocent people that are working their jobs. Yeah. See, there, there's this thing where everybody wants to quit their job. No, keep your job. Yeah. Your job is sustainable. Yeah. But get multi- have multiple streams of income. Yeah, yeah. It's important for your family. You know, now, can I keep it real with you? We're at the table. I like, I like what you're saying, right? You know, I did network marketing for a while. I did prepay legal. Okay, when was that? I was young. I was okay. 38, so I don't think I was like hmm, 20. Because it was popular at one point, right? Oh, it was huge. You know, you had you had your Darnell self, um, who's still you know in the network marketing space now. And he, here's the problem that I have with network marketing, which okay. I'm not a huge fan of it, but I believe that it works. Right? Yeah. Because I look at you, look at Stormy, look at David and Monty. Uh, my boy Justin is in it. I know a lot of people who are winning in network marketing, and I think it's great. I don't believe everything is for everyone. Like, I'm in the personal brand content creation space. I love it. Some people look at me and say, that's not a job. You know, doing YouTube, da 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 that's not no career. And I, I, and, and I respect that. They don't know, though. They really don't know. And it's like, and that's why I don't knock nothing. I think the biggest problem that I have with network marketing, I want you to speak to it for the people who are watching, because network marketing may be for you. Let's, right. let's be real. But I think the biggest problem is we'll see you. We'll see the Coach Stormies who are making the millions, but then we'll see everyone on the bottom barely barely making it. Where, though? Uh, I mean, there's a lot of network marketing companies, though, that have it. Yeah, so if you follow my page, and I'm, I'm sure you like, we're, we're Instagram friends now. Yeah. Um, I have a girl, right? Uh-huh. Um, her name is LaQuella Johnson. She's okay. working at Macy's Spring Perfume. Okay. Overweight. She was, like, probably 280 pounds, right, okay. or whatever. And she was just consistent. Yeah. And through working together, keeping God first, mm. she earned about $2.5 million with me. But I have a girl what? named Aquandra, you know, and she's in North Carolina, CNA. Yeah. And she's still a CNA and was making less than six figures at her job. Yeah. And she's made over a quarter million dollars with me. Wow. And I have Green Dalsey, who actually was a deputy in the government okay. with the contracts I work with. Um, older woman, she's like, what, 50 now, right? Yeah. Two children, has more degrees than the thermometer. Okay. And she earned over $1.5 million of me. Okay. I have single moms. I have dads making $10,000, okay. $20,000, 5000 a month. So the issue is, Anthony, and I, I love that we're talking about this. Yeah. When we think about network marketing, we have to stop thinking about the millions. Mm, that's good. Now, now, we now you're talking. We have to talking about the millions. Now you're talking. I, I do content creation. Okay. I, I make money for my personal brand. Yeah. That's not going to work for everybody else, right? Right. And network marketing, when you have a product and a service, I was 50 pounds overweight. I felt good. I was 205 pounds. Mm -hmm. I weigh 171 right now. Putting in that work. Come on now. What did I use? My products. Mm -hmm. So people keep focusing on the money. You join a business because the stuff works, right? And then secondly, when it comes down to network marketing, it's about the everyday person. Mm. Forget my, let's not, like, I actually would love people to stop talking about the millions. Like, it would make me feel more comfortable. Yeah, yeah. Because that's not the story for everybody. That's right. not the majority. It's the people that pay their car note, their cell phone bills, yeah, their yeah. light bills, yeah. their kids' daycare, yeah. take your family on a trip. Yeah. That's why network marketing was created. Mm. Network marketing is one of the fastest paid industries in the world that the everyday average person with no social media following can win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can go set up at the church. Yeah. You can go set up at the schools. Yeah. You can do at the PTA meetings. Yeah. You can set up a yard. There's so much you can do. Yeah. But I think social media has 10 x the reality yeah. of a lot of things, and that's where it sucks. Yeah. So for me, my job right now, because mm-hmm. I have other streams, mm-hmm. Natalie, if you're going to do network marketing, you have to share the truth. Come on. I don't no longer want to do meetings talking about millions of dollars. Yeah, yeah. That was yeah. the past. Yeah, yeah. The work ethic has changed mm-hmm. post pandemic. Mm-hmm. People's work ethic has changed. Mm-hmm. What is your freedom amount? What is that dollar amount? You keep talking about your kids' school and your kids' daycare and groceries are high. I keep saying everybody groceries are high. You know, gas is high. How much gas do you need a month? That's the money I want you to make. Yeah. If you need seven hundred dollars a month. That's what your freedom amount is. That's so good. Th- like, let's do that. And I'll also say that's with any business. Yeah. People have this high standard for these businesses, whether it's boutiques or whatever they're starting, yeah. and they want to start off with the million. Start off with the freedom amount. Mm. You know, now, now you're talking. I mean, I, I could respect, I could respect that, man. I, I, 
I have a lot of people ask me my opinions about network marketing, and I'll be honest, I speak for a lot of them. You know, yeah. I just um, spoke for um, Mary Kay. Gloria, and, I love her. Yeah, Make you know, things, yeah. and I'm like, man, I think there's a lot of, I think there's a lot of good in it. I think there's a lot of good in every industry, but then there's also a lot of that. And I think people have to be wise, like you said, look at, do your research on any company, um, because... I'll tell people, don't join my company. Don't, don't, do not. I told everyone who joined my staff, don't join the staff if you, if you don't believe in the product and the, and the message of what I'm teaching. The vision, yeah. If you don't believe in being debt free, if you don't believe in building wealth without accumulating debt, don't be on the team because you're not going to show up. And if you don't believe in a product of the services or the message, then you're going to have a bad experience because you, you're you not going to really move it the way you need to move right. it. And so, and I learned that from my mentor and friend, Dave Ramsey. He was like, hey, listen, man, if you don't agree in the message, leave. Because out of alignment. Yeah. When you're out of alignment, you can't do the assignment. Ooh. It's not possible. So if everyone on your team has Dang. their own vision, but you can have your own vision, but are you a part of Anthony's vision? Come on, man. Can you serve the mission? Yeah. It's servitude. Yep. And the last thing I'm going to say this about network marketing, I love that you're talking about this because, woo, this needs to be talked about. The emotional manipulation. That's so good. The emotional manipulation is a problem in network marketing. And they're innocent people that are weak and they're trying to get built up, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like where it's important what church you go to. Yeah. And you have to make sure that that pastor yeah. is on assignment yeah. and stays in, in alignment with the word of God. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It stays in their anointing. But if you go to a church that's not blessed and the pastor is not, is in the world, you can't grow, right? Mm hmm. So in network marketing, there's a lot of mind games. Yeah. So for me, guess what? Yeah. I had to take a seat back, a step back for a second. Uh -huh. As I was healing, uh -huh. as I was feeling better, I said, all right, let me first talk to Coach Stormy. Okay. Let's have a conversation. What's your vision? Where are you at right now? Uh -huh. It clicked. We're, we're, we get it now. Uh -huh. We get it. We can rock. Let me talk to the owner. Uh -huh. What's going on? Where are we at? I want to make sure that we're for the people. Mm. I can't do anything that's out of alignment with my assignment right now. Mm -hmm. I tried that before. Mm -hmm. So when people are coming, they, I can be trusted. God can trust. He can give me the words. I don't got to, like, finesse and say all these big things that I don't understand. And when I used to go to these meetings or see stuff on Instagram, I'm like, what are you talking about? Yeah. I understand that we're selling personal development. Mm -hmm. But can this person leave this meeting mm. and still feel filled up? So. Whew, we boy, I wish we had a uh, much longer show because you ain't here dropping some jewels. <laughs> and I mean, I I actually, um, I think I've only had three people in the network marketing space on my show: David uh, and Justin Owens, who are good friends of mine. And yeah, they're super dope. Love what they're doing. Um, so you're my third, the first woman. I'm a coach. Storming. I'm coming for you. I'm, I'm going to get you on the show. We're going to talk. I actually have her coming to DMV for a, a Total I've, Life Change meeting. This this weekend. Well, I have her right? on a Friday, okay. but I have, I'm have i bringing her back. So when she comes back, we'll line it up. Oh, I'll, man. We're we'll going to make that happen. I, I want Because I like her story. The like, story's really, incredible. I like her, her story, and I, and I think I think the story needs to be heard. It so. has to be heard because people don't think it's real. $50 million in Total Life Changes. Like, in eight years? That's crazy. Yeah, you have, we gonna, we gonna line that. That's my gift to you. Oh man, I appreciate that gift. <laughs> I really do. Hey, before we go, you you uh, you wrote a book, and I really want to make sure that people know about your book and how they can get your book, um, and what's inside the book because, um, y'all, this is a young queen winning, um, in this space and 30, uh, 35 millionaire, God millionaire, not self made, <laughs> um, single. Not married. I don't know about her dating life. So, brothers, that's on y'all if y'all slide <laughs> in the DMs. But listen, if you slide in the DMs, boy, y'all better come correct. Listen. Y'all see the please, flow. Don't let, don't let Anthony get y'all excited. Because <laughs> them DMs be in shambles. <laughs> <laughs> What's your book about, y'all? Oh, my book is called Be Becoming a Brand. Okay. It's 12 principles on how to build your brand. Okay. I mix it with personal development and actual steps to build on social media and how to network. Okay, all right, yeah. all right, all right. So we're gonna drop her book in the uh, show notes today. Well, we're also gonna drop her website and her social media in Thank you, I appreciate notes, that. Uh, because she she winning, y'all. Thank you. Uh, she is she is winning. I am I am just inspired. I love seeing 
our black sisters win. Thank you. You know, because the number one rising entrepreneur is a black woman. Yes. Uh, but then also, too, while they're rising to entrepreneurship, they also have the most debt. Listen. And to hear you say is like, hey, I made this money. I made some mistakes. But when I quickly had to reprogram myself, I started attacking the debt and really making wiser decisions with money. And black sisters need to hear that from other black sisters. Yes. You know? I'm going to do more of it. And I'm dedicated to this mission. Oh, man, listen. So y'all need to go follow her, ladies. <laughs> Thank you. Hands down. Yo, we love you. We'll see you in the next show. Peace out.